Hey everyone. Yes. Hello. Uh, so I'm lucky. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. How's um how's quarantine? It's not bad. Yeah, it's all right. How's quarantine for you? It's okay. You know, I was like, I'm kind of enjoying it. Like, you know, I'm working out more than I probably like ever worked out in the last like two or three years. Yeah. I I'm cooking, which is really nice. Um, never really get a chance to do that. So I feel Good like I'm really relaxed. Huh? Good for you. I know. I, um, I feel so productive. I can't really cook. I, I, did a little, <laughs> uh, I did a little cheese on toast last night. That's good. That's better than nothing. Yeah. What, yeah. Um, what, what have you been doing to keep yourself busy? Um, uh, all sorts. I've, well, like for the first week... I was spending a lot of time on my phone mm -hmm. um, and I realized that like it was like 7 p.m. at night I, it was like one day I, look, I was on my phone and then I looked at my at the time it was like half seven at night and it was <laughs> dark outside and I was like I've literally done nothing today mm -hmm. like there's not one thing today that I can look back and say oh like I did that today yeah and it was like a whole day disappeared and it was really scary for me um so like I, feel I decided like, that you know, you I would have are... a schedule. Yeah. I decided to have a schedule mm -hmm. that I would that I would go to every day. So like I'd write a song every day. Um I'd spend time with family. Mm -hmm. I'd have like some T V time and then I'd have like something artistic, maybe I'd draw or like learn something new and like meditate. Um and I've I've been a lot healthier and a lot better for it. Yeah, but I feel like you guys, you know, you're always out on the road and you're always out and about. It must be kind of nice to take, like, you know, a couple of weeks. Maybe a bit, you know, a bit too long. It's been a lot of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> but just, like, a couple of weeks, you know, like, chill out, do what you want to do and spend some time on yourself. Yeah, definitely. What, yeah. Um, what do you miss the most about, like, not, you know, not being out there, not being in front of people and performing? Um, I mean, yeah, just I, touring's, like, our favourite thing to do, so we're missing obviously touring um hello by the way everyone hi <laughs> i haven't uh, acknowledged everyone watching <laughs> hi everyone we miss you we're all. um we're going live this weekend for cameo cares weekend so you know we have like a ton of live events over the weekend which you guys can all tune into and this is obviously the best one <laughs> so i'm glad that we you know got a chance to to chat to you Reese, and what do you what do you think you guys are you guys miss each other do you miss the boys yes i miss the boys very very much but to be honest we've been staying in touch every day mm -hmm. uh, and we have little um we, we've been having like zoom nights so like uh where we'll all sit on zoom and we'll um we'll just like chat and have a little bit of a party together yeah um which has been nice do you guys do you like know. quiz nights tonight we've got a bit of a night actually uh, like we're uh we're gonna like see each other and and just play some games and stuff um but not not a quiz night yet but we will for sure we need to do like some kind of pub quiz yeah they've you know i've been doing those with, with my friends pretty much like every friday saturday sunday night because there's like nothing else to do yeah you know, they get nice. kind of fun yeah nice um, um and you know what when you guys are, are back out and, and you're gonna be doing touring again what's like the one thing that you're most looking forward to when you're allowed out <laughs> um the one thing i'm most looking forward to uh i said the first thing that i'm gonna do when all this is over is just like go to the pub with my granddad <laughs> i miss my granddad oh, that's so sweet. um and i'm looking forward to just being able to just like go down to the pub Hopefully football will be up, will be back on, um, and we can just watch football, have a drink. Some normality would be nice. Mm -hmm. Does Does he live far away from you? No. Well, normally I'm never here, so mm -hmm. whenever I'm home, I, I see him as much as I can. Um, but obviously, that's not the case uh, right now. So um, yeah, I. I I usually see him when I'm home, but I can't. So when all this is over, I'm going to see him, hopefully. 
Yeah, I I think everyone's going to be down the pub, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be the first place that everyone goes and needs, oh, sure. uh, needs a big night out. Um, you yeah. know, kind of going back to, to when, when you guys are touring and everything, do you, you know, what was that, that moment for you? Like, you know, throughout your career, taking it back, you know, to when you were 15 and, you know, you auditioned for, um, for X Factor and, you know, what, what, what was like the, the reason that you kind of, you got to that point and, and you thought, you know what, I'm going to, you know, take my break and I'm going to, I'm going to audition for X Factor. Um... Well, like, before going on that, I'd never actually, I'd never been one to, like, watch the show. My mum was, like, a big, my mum watched it. My yeah, sister, all mums are. Never, <laughs> yeah, I never really watched it. Uh, and I didn't really ever think about going on the show. I was, like, doing a lot of pub gigs around, like, my local town. And I'd, I'd, um, I'd just, like, yeah, I, I enjoyed doing that and just, like, gigging around, like, Manchester and stuff. Um, and this one time I did a gig on on a on like a decently sized stage in Manchester it was called um Night and Day Cafe and then like after the show some guy came up to me and was like oh do you want to audition for X Factor I was like oh okay cool um but then yeah it was kind of just like a, a little bit of a whirlwind honestly I enjoyed it and I met lots of friends through it mm -hmm. and um I think before I went on that show I was quite shy um yeah. And it kind of forced me to come out of my shell and gave me good experience of like, you know, being just part of that whole world and the craziness that is surrounding it. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. If you could like give yourself, you know, one piece of advice on what you would say to yourself before you, you know, walked into that room and auditioned in front of Simon and everyone, what do you think you'd say? <laughs> um... Don't be as nervous. I, I was so nervous. Um, and just, this isn't it. Like, you know, there's more to come after this. So don't think, mm -hmm. oh, this is the be and end all, you know? Because um, I didn't know what was going to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. I literally went on that show, just just was like, well, I'll see what happens and I'll go back mm -hmm. to playing my normal pub gigs that I haven't been playing. But, you know... Um, it's been pretty wild since, since since I did that, um, and obviously you know it led me to meet the boys, which is I couldn't be more thankful for that reason. Mm -hmm. I see it as kind of like a, like a stepping stone um, to meeting to meeting the boys because without yeah. it, you know, I, the boys wouldn't have seen me and I wouldn't have met them. So mm -hmm. I'm very lucky. I'm such a firm believer, you know, that everything happens for a reason. Yeah, you know, like that's that's something that that got you to the point where you are now, which is so cool. Do you, you know, what yeah, was that sure. point for you where you with the boys and you know being now part of New Hope Club and you guys are doing so well? What was that point for you where you know you you kind of stopped and you thought, oh my god, like you know we've really come so far. Was there like a, a particular point where you like you know at a show or you know had you you know got like a a record on your on your single or something like that? Well, I think, like, we get those moments a lot because um, I think, you know, we're still growing and we're still quite new to everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we only got to do our first world tour last year. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just the, the first time we ever did our own show was a pretty special moment because we, you know, we'd been touring a lot, but we'd be doing support slots, which was so much fun. Um, and, like... You know, you, you you become friends with everybody else's crew and, um, you know, you get to see all these amazing venues. But the fans and the people that are there, they aren't there for you. They're there for the main act. And to walk into a venue and it's your venue for that night and everybody there is working for you and is putting this show together that is going to be like our show. And for every fan to, you know, buy a ticket and come to see our show which is just it's just wild to us because we love live shows and like when we were younger we went to live shows together like that's what we love to do um mm -hmm. and just that feeling of like getting your ticket through the post getting on a train um and mm -hmm. like getting excited for a show like people do that at our shows now which is just so wild it's so weird for for yeah. us to think that um but it's so cool 
And I think that every moment that we walk into a venue and it's our show, that's like a moment where I'm like, this is wild. Mm -hmm. This is like insane. I think I keep seeing like loads of people in the comments saying that, you know, we're so proud of you and, and how far you guys have come. And that's like so awesome. Somebody actually had a question similar and, and it was uh, Ellie Lambert on Twitter. And she said, what's like the best concert or show that you've been to that's that's not yours? Like what was, you know, the 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 one moment for you where you were like, oh, my God, this is cool. This is what I want to do with, you know, with the show that you've been to. Mm. Um so, I mean, the first show that I ever went to was, like, I'm quite a, a Manchester, like, boy. I, I like mm -hmm. my indie bands. Um, so the first gig I ever went to was a Cortina's gig. Uh, Cortina's are, like, a band that are pretty big in Manchester. Well, like, the biggest band in Manchester. Um, and I went to see them at the Manchester Arena. And, like, just the play, I just remember it so vividly, like, being in that that place with, like, with people from Manchester who were, were like, kind of like, Manchester's kind of like everyone's family. Like everyone <laughs> just loves like the same kind of music and um, at, every single person in the arena was like singing the songs and um, it just felt so special just having that hot sense of community um, inside that building. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was pretty much like, from then on I was obsessed with like live shows. Um, and I like, I was in a music school and we put on a live show every year um, and just like yeah I was just obsessed with live shows and I went to Leeds Festival too mm -hmm. I think I, lo I loved that very much I got to see like Green Day um, yeah. and that was sick uh, just yeah I mean all live shows that I see I'm just like yeah in all. what's um like going back to Leeds Festival what's like if you could play at one festival what would it be um, it's got to be Glastonbury, hasn't it? Mm. Surely. It's got to be yeah. Glastonbury. Um, Such a shame it's like postponed this year, as of everything else. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like, Glastonbury is amazing. But, I mean, for me, I'd probably say Leeds, because it was the first festival I went to. Yeah. And it's close, it's quite close to home. Um, and Leeds Festival is just so much fun. Are you, um, are you a football fan? Yeah, a big football fan. What what team? Blackburn Rovers. All right. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's okay. I'm Why? a United fan. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, so I, I was hoping you weren't going to say Man City. <laughs> there's a little bit of a rivalry there. Yeah, slight. You but, know, yeah, um, yeah. That's so weird because my football team, Blackburn Rovers, are sh like, uh, they're, they're like streaming a live game tonight. They stream a live game every weekend. And oh, really? tonight that's is... Cool. Tonight is um, Blackburn Rovers versus Man U. We win, obviously, because... Yeah, I mean... yeah, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, we'll find out. Oh, no, I that's know. A... This is a past game. This is a game yeah. that's already been... <laughs> oh, I thought you said so... it was live. Yeah, yeah, they, like, stream it live, so it's, like, an old okay. game that, like, plays right. out, like, live. But I know we win. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll take it, I'll take it. Um, okay, so another question that we had from one of your fans, um, Maria Alev, I think, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, um, was if one day you had to change your name, what would you name yourself? Um, okay, so if I had to change my name, if I was going to change my name, I'd, I'd make it something like epic. Yeah. Um, it'd have to be something like, uh, like Thor. Or, uh, like the movie? Um, just like something that was... Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I'm sorry, I got a call just then. Um, <laughs> something just like powerful, you know? Because mm -hmm. if I was going to change it, it'd have to be like epic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what... Um... If you, another one we had was from Sean's New Hope. What's the best music advice you've ever been told? Um, oh, I think advice I always go off is that, you know, hard work will never let you down. Um, I mm -hmm. think that I'm living proof of the fact that no matter how small of a town you come from or 
where you come from or uh, what background you have. You can always make something of yourself. You can always follow a dream. You can always do what you want to do if you work hard enough um, mm-hmm. and you, you know, you channel it as much as you can. I think that hard work is just like, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to let you down. Yeah. That's, and my dad told me that he makes me work hard every day. <laughs> mm-hmm. And did you, I know, I know like a, a little bit, I was, I was watching your X Factor interview earlier and did you, you know, you said a little bit about your dad, you know, like, being being a big inspiration for you for music when when um when you were growing up like you know aside aside from your dad who do you think like if you could pick anyone you know famous or not famous um who who do you think was like your biggest inspiration growing up to to you know follow in the footsteps of um I had loads like I had obviously like loads of bands that I really liked um I was obviously a very big Beatles fan as I'm sure mm. any yeah nice is. um. Yeah. But, like, I loved the Beatles. I loved, like, Stone Roses and, um, like, Oasis, obviously. Um, and just, like, I just loved, like, all indie bands, like Arctic Monkeys and, mm-hmm. and Cortinas. I just was obsessed with just the music that uh, was coming out of, like, Manchester. And mm-hmm. um, I think, obviously, my family are a big inspiration to me as well because... Yeah. Um, the very hardworking people, um, and I think that I've channeled that into my music, um, and I work hard through that. What um, what what do you think? Like your, you know, your if you could kind of go back in time and and predict, you know, what what your life would be like. What yeah. What pre you know being a singer and going on X Factor and doing that. What did you think that your life would would be like what do you think you'd be doing um well I knew I wanted to do music Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously when I was doing it in pubs and and clubs and stuff I I did uh I did know I wanted to do music um Mm -hmm. and obviously I was part of the my music school uh so I was always doing I was always in and around music um, yeah but I you know I didn't know I was gonna do it as a job um so I was like just doing it as a hobby like most people do yeah but I think that you know there's a certain point that when you have to decide like oh I'm gonna actually do this I'm gonna leave so like, I left school you know I I literally just threw it all at the wall just to see what stuck I was yeah I was literally like I had a, I had a decision to make and um I just said, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to see what happens. If it doesn't happen, then, hey, McDonald's ain't so bad. I can, <laughs> I can just get a job there. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, that's that's good advice for everyone. Follow your dreams, right? Why that's, not? Um, You've only got one the shot. Thing. I know, and it's the same with, you know, like, education and, and everything else. Like, there's, there's tons of situations that are always going to be there. And I think, you know, grasping those opportunities while you have them is so important. If you um, if you could get a cameo from anyone in the world, who would it be? Um, some of the Office cast for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a like huge Office fan. Yeah, I'm a huge Aren't Office we all? fan. Yeah, we actually have um, um Angela. Angela's signed up today to do cameos just for one day to to all go no towards way. cameo cares. So I'll send you the link to that. You might have to get one. That's so cool. <laughs> We're, we're um, waiting on Steve Carell. We're waiting on Steve Carell. No <laughs> way. <laughs> if Steve Carell does it. <laughs> uh, um, that's and then another question, though, just trying to get through the, the ones from your fans. Um, so Luke Feet Me, I think. Sorry, I like probably am saying all of these wrong. Um, if you could pick any album to be the soundtrack of your life, what would it be? Um, or we could go with song too if you can't think of album. Um, I'd probably go like an Arctic Monkeys song, uh, song well, album probably. Mm-hmm. Just because I was, like, growing up I was obsessed with their albums and um, it's kind of like my, I'm, I was obviously obsessed with Beatles and Oasis and Storm Roses, but they weren't really my era, obviously. So, yeah. But Arctic Monkeys, they were bringing out albums when I was young and I just remember being so excited 
when they released music and mm -hmm. like playing it on the bus to school and um I just remember it so vividly so I'd probably say like um either either whatever people say I am that's why I'm not or um I think fluorescent adolescent if it I think it's mm -hmm. called that that's a good one that's a good soundtrack to someone's life I think yeah yeah. It doesn't get doesn't get better than that. Um, okay, one of the the last ones from your fans is from Nova Besson. Beeson, um, if you had a superpower, what would it be and why? Um, if I had a superpower, then I would go. I would be able to fly. I think because okay. you just you just be oh, it'd be so easy, wouldn't it? You'd just be able to yeah. go on holiday whenever you like. Mm hmm. Um, no, going like, back and forth from from LA, that'd be so oh, nice. Yeah, but it'd take quite a while. But like, <laughs> if you could fly really fast, that oh, mm -hmm. that'd be a dream. Well, I don't think you know. If you have a superpower, I think you can. If you were to wish for a superpower, you can wish for whatever you want. You could wish to go. At, I'm like not very good with with speeds, but you're like, I don't know, to yeah. get five thousand miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, I think it'd be. It'd be between that and being invisible. Because being invisible could be fun. Because mm. think yeah. of the places where you could go that when if you were invisible. You could just be, like, chilling in the queen, in, like, the queen's house. Yeah. You could just, I mean, it'd be a bit creepy, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could go anywhere. It'd be sick. Yeah, but you also couldn't really, like, you couldn't hang out with them. you just have to watch them. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's why it'd be a little <laughs> bit creepy. Um... <laughs> Yeah. It'd be cool to like, you know, go and have tea with the queen. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not yeah. sure I'm not sure I'd I'd want to watch her having tea. But you know, yeah. that's that's a good one. I like I think I'd Or you could haunt it. people. You could mm. haunt like your ex. Yeah. Yeah. Who come out. Yeah, I'm sure I'd love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and then we have a couple of questions like from um Blake and George. So they both gave one question each. One, actually, I really want to hear the story behind. So Blake asked, what show did um, your appendix break it at? Oh, my goodness. And I oh. did not know the story. So this is nice one, Blake, for bringing story. up like a horrible memory. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so basically it was the, so we did these shows in, in, in the UK Mm -hmm. um and it was like kind of our first ever tour like we put on these shows for like free um just i think they were just to be like f we called them fan fests where yeah um fans came along for free um and it was just like a yeah it was just it was just this thing that we was doing in the uk the first night was in london um mm -hmm. and i was not feeling well leading up to the show i was feeling like really just like really groggy and not great yeah. But um, the night of the show, I was like, I just took, I just drank some lem sip. Do you know lem sip? Yeah. Uh, That's I like, I had a... the, honestly, I live by lem sip. The Americans yeah. don't have lem sip. And no, they they have like, um, they have emergency? a different one. Is it like yeah, emergency. Emergency. Yeah, emergency. But yeah, like when not... I... When I moved to the States for a while, that was, like, one of the one things that I packed was just a bunch of lem sip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, like, giving it to our, our, um, our, yeah, our employees. Sorry, go ahead. No, so I literally just, I just drank some lem sip, um, and I was, like, okay, I'm feeling a little bit better. Um, and then I went on, I did the show, and then, like, just, like, like towards the end of the show, I was just feeling horrid. Um, and I, the, we went back to the hotel, and the boys were like, okay, we're all going out, like, uh, to to celebrate the first show. And I was like, I'm going to stay in. I feel awful. Like, by this point, my temp, like, I was hot to touch. Like, yeah. I was literally, like, really hot. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so, I I went to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night and was just, like, throwing up. I couldn't stop throwing oh, up. Um, and I had, like, oh, it was horrific. It was horrific. I was just so ill. Uh, and I, I said, right, I'm going to go to the hospital. Um, the boy, George was like, "Do you want me to come with you?" And I was like, "No, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'll go on my own." Uh, I got, I got there, and like, I went to the front desk, and she, she was like, "Oh my goodness!" Like, like I was like green almost. Yeah. Like I just looked like a horrible color. Mm. All um, the signs of an appendicitis. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, 
they like rushed me in whatever and like the doctor was just like look took one look at me and pressed like right in one spot in my abdomen and like the sharpest pain ever hit me mm. and like he was like okay you've got you've got appendicitis um and then so they removed my appendix like that morning mm -hmm. um and it w i hadn't i had a burst appendix it had that's burst. awful yeah it was pretty bad it, it were you I was, out for like the rest of your fan fests i was out for the rest of the fan fests but i was back on the next tour i made it for the next tour, which was yeah i wasn't too bad but it was yeah, scary. On, Blake, that's an awful question. I know, <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, it, they said like I was really lucky because if I didn't detect it, I mean, I don't know how I could not detect it. But if I didn't yeah. go into the hospital, would have been in serious like danger. That's awful. I've like never had an appendicitis, but after your story, I really hope that you know that never happens to me. But at least you'll never get it again. I, I know guess exactly. The silver lining. Yeah. I know. Um, okay, last question. And we ask this for everyone who starts at Cameo as like a new employee, we ask them what is their death row meal? So, you know, if you if you were to put it's kind of morbid, but if you were to be put on death row tomorrow, right? What is the last meal you can have, you know, breakfast, lunch and dinner from wherever you want, um, but or yeah, start a main course dessert, wherever you want, what would your last meal on earth be? Okay. So, um, starter, mm -hmm. starter, I would have, um, like fried brie, oh. um, with like yeah. the bread that you can like dip in. Mm. Um, I love that so much. Um, and then for main, oh, this is difficult. Oh, um, I'd probably go... Hmm, let me think, let me think. <laughs> no, I'd, if it was my death row, I'd have my mum's my mom's Sunday roast. Like oh, my mum's Sunday yeah, roast. Yeah, that's I'd a have good that. choice. Um, and then my dessert There's nothing would... more comforting either than like a Sunday no. roast. I'm sure, you know, you're not feeling good if you're about to be on death row. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And a Sunday roast probably does the trick. Yeah. Um, and then for my dessert, I'd probably have carrot cake. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. My, I think mine's like pretty so I I go with camembert. I think for for the starter, but I'm pretty with you on the rest of the meal. Nice. I like that. Um, we actually missed out George's question by accident. So I yeah, I saw that. We're gonna everyone's back going on that. absolutely crazy in the comments. <laughs> I know. I just saw it in the comments. <laughs> Sorry, George. We haven't forgot you. Um. His one is, when are George and Blake's birthdays? Oh, I knew he'd ask that. <laughs> I knew he'd ask that. Oh. This is a very good test of your friendship. Okay, uh, guys, help me out, please. <laughs> you can't look uh, at the comments. Okay, I won't look. I, I won't look. I honestly, oh my goodness. So, I know George's is in March. Okay. I think. Blake's Any idea is, on the date? Like March is a long month. I think it's I think it's March like seventh. Eh, wrong. Oh. <laughs> is it you March? Get, you get you get one. You get two tries. Is it March tries. though? It's March. Yeah. Okay. Um, Blake's is October. Yeah. Come now on. you just got to get to dates. You got. You got one more try of each of them. Is there a nine in Blake's? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Just testing you. But it might be there might be one in the other. Oh, George's is in October second. No. Uh, yeah. You're right. No, Blake's <laughs> is October second. Oh, that uh, George's. Yeah. Is <laughs> yeah, Blake's is October second. Sure. Okay, and what uh, about George's? George's is. So George is March. I know it's March. Um, so if Blake's is October second, George's has got to be. Oh, is George's in the twenty? Twenty of them. No. Oh goodness sake! Listen, we'll just go through every every day of the month. <laughs> so it's got to be in the team. It's 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 got a nine in it. I could do a few. Oh, is it nineteen? 
No. Oh, 29. <laughs> The first one. No, this is the ninth. The ninth. <laughs> oh my goodness. There we go. We got it. We got it in the end. That's oh one my thing goodness. you have to learn in quarantine is is George and Blake's birthday. So by the time quarantine's over, that's what you got to know. I'm not good with birthdays. Yeah. When's yours? Thirteenth of August. <laughs> All right. We got that one. <laughs> I know that. I know that. It's not that I'm. A, it's not that I'm a bad friend. It's just that that's not something that I mm-hmm. like. Um, my brain chooses it doesn't understand dates I don't know why